Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be repotting a couple slipper orchids, paphiopetalums, in my collection. Some of them need to move to bigger pots and then some need to actually move down a pot size. Um, and so let me just show you what I have today. So this is Paphiopetalum delanatii. Um, as you can see, it got set back a little, so the new leaves are a lot smaller than the old leaves. And as a result, the plant is really small for this pot, so I'm going to be moving this into a smaller pot. And then these are some um, Papiopetalum dayanums that are in two inch pots, maybe one and a half inch pots. But um, they're really big for their pot, and so I want to move them into something a little bigger. Hopefully to get a stronger root system, I got four of those. And then, this is the Paphiopetalum tyanum. Um, it recently bloomed for me, and it's producing a bunch of new growths now, so um, <clears throat> I want to repot this into a smaller pot. Um, because I think this, this pot was too big for it to begin with. And then I have just a couple things that need... Um, New pots. This is a spicery anum that needs a bigger pot. You can see there's a lot of growths in the, in a small pot. And then here's another spicery anum that is is just really big. Um, and I think it needs a new pot. And it'd be a good time to check up on the roots. Anyways, so uh, the mix that I got going, trying something new. Usually I use a bark. Perlite and sphagnum mix, but today I'm trying um, something new. I got a bit of bark, perlite. This is pumice. This is the the small sized pumice stone. Um, I think eighth of an inch size, and then I have some horticultural charcoal here. Uh, so the purpose is for it to be a little better draining than the uh, sphagnum media I had before. So I'll need to water more frequently um, than the media before, but it should it should have better um, aeration. And so, just get started. I'll go with this half spicery item first. So this says, um, I got this plant in November 2023 as a single growth fan and now it has three fans that are almost blooming size and there's a fourth one on the way that you'll see shortly when I unpot this thing. So I'm just gonna take the tag out um, and take this fan out. I have uh, some conveniently placed plastic bags to catch all of my junk. So I'm just gently Pushing away all the media, old media from the, the roots. So I'm, I'm pretty new to growing paphiopetalums. So, um, be interesting for me as well, because I'm not really sure what to expect when I'm potting these things. I'm, I'm kind of just praying the roots aren't garbage. Okay. Here is the plant. Um, so the roots aren't garbage, hooray. They're a little bit thin though, and I'm not sure if um, they are, if there's enough roots for a plant of this size. It looks like there could be um, a much larger root system on this thing, but that's why I'm moving it to a bigger pot and to a airier media. To, sort of promote root growth. Looks like there is a new root coming up right here. You can see that. Anyways, so I'm gonna be moving this to a slightly larger pot, not that much bigger. So here's the old pot and here's the new pot. Um, yeah, it's just a little bit bigger, but it's definitely quite a bit taller. And so I hope that will it'll help a bit. I'm just gonna see how I want to place this. 
So, uh, my media is here. Um, usually I, I would clean up some of the old roots with, uh, with my shears, but it doesn't look like there's anything I want to cut. Maybe this. No, everything is still pretty, pretty good and solid. So I don't want to cut any of those roots. All right. So I'm just going to kind of mix this together. Probably could have remixed it before I started. Um, I like the pot. I like the pot with um, the media dry because it doesn't um, stick to everything when I'm trying to put it in the pot. So just mixing until I kind of have a consistency that I, I feel is good. Um, nothing very um, exact about this process. I'm just doing what I feel. Alright, this looks good to me. It's like nicely and evenly mixed. So, I'm gonna put some stuff in there. Some of these larger chunks of charcoal are actually pretty big, so I might just like snap, snap them, snap them up. Okay. So, I'm just gonna put the plant into the pot where I want it to sit. I want it to um, be just above, or just below the uh, top of the pot. So, so this new growth that's emerging, I want it to be just submerged in the substrate. And then I'm just gonna put the substrate in, use my hands to tap it into place. Um, So my, my goal with this more inorganic medium is also just so that I don't have to repot as often. Um, I guess the bark will break down, but I mean perlite and and rock shouldn't shouldn't break down that fast. Or I mean shouldn't break down at all. In in culture. So I'm just topping the pot, making sure medium is going in, and then I'll gently take my two thumbs on the side just to make sure the plant is secure. And that looks like it is good. So here it is, repotted. You can see the pot is a much better size for a plant of that size. And so, most important thing to do, people don't talk about this very much, is Take your pencil and your tag, and you write the date you repotted. So I will just put on the tip here, um, July 2024. You know, I think for, for paths, you don't need to go to the day specifically because they don't need repotting that frequently, in my experience at least. Um, but it's good to know when you last repotted something so that you're not um, too late or or too soon for a potting. So I'm just trying to see this diamond. Alrighty, first one done. So next I'm gonna move on to these um, day ends. And so these were, uh, I deflasked these in, see I have the date. October 26th of 2023, and I uh, never repotted them since, and so I'm really curious to see um, the roots on this. I don't know if they're going to be that strong because media feels kind of wet and soggy, and that's, again, due to the, the sphagnum I had in the media. So, just emptying the pot. I do reuse these pots after cleaning them thoroughly. So, yeah. Okay, let's see how this looks. Here we go. Here's a dead root. 
Yeah. Nice and mushy. Get that out. Okay, so to me, this honestly doesn't look that bad. Um, although, again, I think I think this should have have more roots than this for a for a fan this size. Um, I'm just gonna peel off some old leaves. But yeah, otherwise this looks, I think this looks pretty good and I'm gonna be increasing the pot size on this one again. I said. So, into something like this, which is, um, and I'm gonna try to center the plant in the pot because before the plant was slightly off to the side. Down here. A little bit dusty, try not to breathe that stuff in. Um, and again, I want, I'm going to try to get the base of the plant to be just below the top of the pot. And so, whatever I need to do is like that. So that was oh, too high. Let's try again. Again, tapping the pot so that the medium is well set. So this plant's a little shaky. Um, so I think I'm actually going to bury it a little deeper this time. So try again. I'm going to actually put the, this end of the plant slightly below the medium. See if that will help stabilize it a little. So I don't know if you can see, there's also a lot of dust coming up from this media. Um, yeah, I try not to breathe that stuff in. Not good for your lungs. So again, my two thumbs like this, it's pushing down. And this fan is still a little shaky, but um, every, I think everything should settle once we add some water. Okay. So again, take the tag, pencil. So I have the deflasked date here, and I'm just going to put underneath RP for repot. And 724. See if I can show you. Nope, the camera doesn't want to focus on that, but just trust me when I said I wrote that, I guess. the rest of the dams later but I know I want to do a down pot to see how, how these little guys are doing. So this is the Path Della Um Yeah, plant was looking pretty weak when I first got it. Um, but I did see one root go down when I put it in this pot so maybe the Plant's actually doing better than I thought. Um, something I did in the past is I put eggshells in the media. I I don't know if I would recommend doing that. I'm gonna be honest, I, I did it to do, add calcium. Um, but I can I can't prove if that really did anything. Um, okay, so to to my happy surprise, I guess these roots look pretty good. You can see there's actually a pretty decent um, root system on this thing. And so, now I'm wondering if I even need to pot it down. Because this, this thing would, I don't even know if it fits in this pot. Let's see.
Yeah, I think I'll move it to this pot. Um, but it won't use very much media, so because there's actually a lot of roots. So this thing will probably need a lot more water. And again, if you missed the mix of um, this substrate, it's perlite, pumice, uh, fine bark, and charcoal. And if you're wondering where I get these things, I just get them off Amazon. It's nothing, nothing special. It's not like special orchid bark or whatever. It's just whatever is on Amazon. There we go. So, again, I'm going to put a date on this. June 24th. Some people neglect the importance of this. Um, it's especially important when you, when you have a larger collection to make sure you're keeping track of everything. All right, this guy will be next. This was a Path Wardii album variety. I don't think the roots are gonna look very good, but this um, this plant did not go well through shipping. And yep, as expected, it has basically no roots. Um, that's a little disappointing. I'm gonna peel off some of these older leaves that aren't looking great. Yeah, that's a little disappointing that the roots look like this. I mean, there's this one is nice and firm still, so I can trust that it'll probably bounce back, but it'll be a while. So putting this into a bigger pot, just because the fan is bigger, um, and give it some some room to, to hopefully grow some, grow some good roots. So this, I mean, won't need to top very much because there's a single root. Um, not exactly ideal. Yeah, I noticed this thing wasn't doing too hot um, when I had another wordy eye that I deflasked after I got this plant at this mature size, and then um, it's almost bigger than this plant now. So, I think I checked up on it. Okay, so I guess one problem with Amazon orchid bark is you get these little bits of plastic in the mix. Um, at least this one I bought. So, I mean, just pick it out. It's it's not a it's not a huge deal. Honestly, probably leaving it in there won't be a huge deal either, but, um, yeah, there's plastic, just a heads up. That's probably what you won't get in some more premium orchid bark, but in my opinion, you don't need, you don't need premium orchid bark. Um, yeah. All right, let's do this one. So people say don't repot when things are in bloom. I'm going to, I'm going to repot this thing in bloom. And the reason I'm going to repot this thing in bloom is because it's been in bloom for almost a month. I'm, I'm not too um, hung up about losing this, losing this flower. And so I'm going to remove these bottom leaves again, just because they're, they're looking a little rough. And it looks like by doing so, I actually revealed... <laughs> Right here, I don't know if you can see, but there's a little green nubbins, and that's actually the start of a new fan, so that's good. One thing I will note is, at the bottom of this pot, there were um, styrofoam chunks. I don't know why people do that. Um, I personally would not use styrofoam um, on my, in my potting mix just because I don't really like 
styrofoam as a as an ingredient in general. But anyways, so here we go. I'm gonna be down potting this into a a one and a half inch pot because I want. Um, I mean, this plant is pretty small, so I want it to sort of fill this pot. And I'm going to, because I have another fan popping up here, I'm going to bury this one pretty good. So, a little bit of substrate at the bottom, and then I'm just gonna gently um, push this one down in place. And now that new growth, is a piece of plastic, that new growth got buried, and um, I'm not worried about that though, I'm, I'm sure it'll grow up and out of the pot. And this pot size is much more suitable for, for this plant size, the other one was a little bit tall. Also perhaps why there was styrofoam on the bottom of that other pot. So this one, again, put the date, June 2024. Okay. And then, we'll move on to this other Spicerianum. So this one was also from Flask. Um, and this was from, again, October. 2023. So let's, I want to see how these roots are doing. Because this is a very wet mix that it's in right now. Um, and judging from what I'm pulling up right now, the roots are not doing great. So I think I might actually have to repot most of these ones that I originally planted in this sphagnum mix. It looks like it might be way too wet. Um, let's see. So here's the plant with the substrate removed. And now I'm just like, I'm squeezing these things to see what is still alive. If it's like really soft and squishy, it's not, not good. Um, so surprisingly, all these look pretty good um, or feel pretty good. So I'm not going to cut any of them off. They're all pretty hard and solid. Okay. But you can see the, the plant is a lot bigger than the root system. And, you know, you want it the other way around. Plants are like icebergs. Um, the root system should always be a lot bigger um, than the actual plant. Or, if not a lot bigger, it should be, should be a little bit bigger, at least, I think. Okay. So, again, because this has, like, roots down there, I'm going to pop it, just so that I can get through. substrate can settle in between the roots. Two thumbs. So this is now buried a little deeper than it was in the other pot. So this was deflast October 21st, 2023. And I repot it on June 2024. power through these last few plants. This is Paphiopetal and Cayenne. This one has a really cute white flower. Um, it's really small. And this one is actually a fragrant slipper orchid. So um, if you're in the market for a, a fragrant slipper orchid, Path Tyanum is 
is one of them. And so here's the root system. So you can compare this to the, the one we just did. It's a lot more robust, a lot bigger. Um, I'm seeing a ton of new growths popping up here, so don't want to bury those. Looks like it might be a little piece of something there. But I do want to put this into a smaller pot, just because this plant is not that big. And so if I actually plant it at an angle here, like this, I might give those new growths a little more light and they might um, take over a little bit, take off faster. So I'm going to do that. So this looks weird now because this plant is shifted to the side like this, but I'm hoping in a few months that it will um, fill up this side of the pot. Okay, so that's pretty in there. Good stuff. And all those new growths here will have access to light. And again, I'm just putting the date. Put the tag on the other side. All right, and then same thing goes with these last three, um, so I'll probably just do them real quick. These are also Path Day items that I took out of flask in October. I think I'll take them all out so we can see the condition of the roots. You know, I thought this mix might have been too wet, but... Um, Looks like the roots look okay. I'm just gonna make sure my tag. I have these all numbered, so I'm gonna make sure the tag stays with the plant. Um, so I think slipper orchids usually don't bloom very quickly out of flask, but I think these might be um, of the right size to bloom this winter, maybe. I don't know, we'll have to see. Okay. Again, this one's got good roots, so you can see here. Again, put the plant with the tag. This last one here. Okay, so I just saw a bunch of roots fall off into the into the bag. Um so let's see what this one's like. Pick off some of the older dead leaves. It looks good. See these 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 tips of roots. The tips of these roots are nice and um, light colored, which means they're growing. And everything is nice and um, solid feeling. So maybe I shouldn't have changed my mix for these. I don't know. We'll see how they do in this new mix. Going up a pot for these ones. Hope I have enough of this in this made. Um There you go. I don't know if you saw that on camera, but Everything really just like settles once when you do that little tap. The little pieces um, of perlite and pumice just sort of fill in all those gaps um, between the the roots. Okay, that one's good. It's a little bit angled to the side, but I mean, it'll it'll grow back. So I'm also trying to place the fans so that they're in line with the um, length, one of the sides of the pots, and not 
off center. Well, that's too bad. It looks like my recording stopped midway. So, I guess I know. I don't know when it stopped, but I guess I know for the future to cut things up. Um, all these things are repotted now, and I'm just going to give them a little bit of water. Um, I'm going to water them until water runs through the pot, which is why I have them on the tray. And I, I, I use just this like hand mister thing to water. And so this is just reverse osmosis water. Um, because tap water here is very hard. So, I just want to like, get water going through the pot. Um, one thing is I am, I am trying to make sure not to get water in, um, the center of the plant and, um, in the the axles of the weeds, so that'll that'll um, that's just a recipe for for rotting rotting the plants. But I will need to go back and add more water. It's like I'm hearing I'm hearing the water go through and get absorbed by stuff. I'm not seeing it come out the bottom of the pot quite yet, so I'll just keep going. This one went out the bottom of the pot really fast. The smell of um, freshly soaked bark is also, I don't know, I find it quite appealing. So the other thing about this is like, I talked about dust earlier from the substrate. Once, um, once you start watering it, you'll see a lot of little sediment, sediment things flowing out the bottom. I just get rid of it so they don't leave a dusty layer um, on my on my trays, my plant trays. So looks like I need more pressure. It's probably way more efficient to use. A watering can, um, but I find this more fun, so that's what I do. And so usually I water these things once a week, back in my old mix with the with the moss. But now I'm thinking I will probably only water them, or I will probably increase that to twice a week, just because this mix doesn't hold as much water. Anyways, if you've made it this far to the video, thank you so much for watching. Sorry it cut out in the middle. Um, I'll know for next time to either do things faster or I don't talk as much. Um, anyways, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.